we are ready to go. Haven't had your coffee yet, have you, Hotshot? <laughs> no, I have not had my coffee. I would very much like to have my coffee, but go do this. Have to go, do this. Go have your, no, no, no. The, the the sooner we record this, the sooner you can have coffee. I'm like That's dangling right, a latte on hostage. like a on a fishing <laughs> yeah, rod in yeah, front of you. The, the, yeah. yeah, You what you want the mocha, don't you, Ross? Yo, you like a fancy <laughs> coffee, don't that would you, be Ross? Nice, yeah. I already oh, missed we, we, like, breakfast, which is annoying. Mm. Um, well, you should have woken up earlier. This is on you. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> we are so well, I, pushed I, for time, though. Like, this is a podcast that is perhaps sometimes listened to at 1.25 speed. Now we're recording it at 1.25 speed. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah, you may be wondering where Safety Third is in this episode. It ain't here. You may be wondering where the news are. Jettison to save white. <laughs> yeah, yeah, jettison to save. This is WTYP Super Ligaria. All right. Uh, <laughs> and one, one, of the, one of the. One of the fun things about podcasting is when you make a joke before you record the episode and then mm -hmm. and then you have to do it a second time during the episode and everyone has to pretend it was the first time they heard don't, the don't, joke. Don't, don't show them how the sausage don't, gets made. Don't, yeah, don't, don't peek behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> don't do behind All the right. scenes on me. All right. Uh, so this is a this is a, a Liam and guest episode, actually. Ooh. Uh, we should probably do the introductions, but for once... I First, hi, I'm Liam Anderson. I'm the person talking now. I'm the king of the podcast, and my pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. All, all else confusion. I don't know who go. Do, do I, Justin? Yeah, I, I was do, about to say, do I go now? Yeah, you, you go, 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 now. go next. Go, now. go next. You can take okay. the pressure off me here. I, I, I'm Justin Rosniak. I'm the person who's talking right now. My pronouns are he and him. Okay, go. Yay, Justin? What? The 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 signal to go has already been made. I can't <laughs> what, do the, that. what the fuck? I'm 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 Alice Caldwell Kelly. I think my pronouns are she and her for now. Um, yay guest. I guess. Hi, my name is Drew. I am an athletic trainer. My name. Uh, my pronouns are she and her. Yes. I. Uh, so on you your brought screen, us this beautiful big M, which yeah. thank you for. I bring you M. <laughs> University of Maryland. Uh, who we're gonna talk about today and that time they killed a child. Oh. Uh, through a sheer, sheer willful negligence, and uh, I just realized uh, they said "oh" in like way too happy a tone. You're like dead child. Oh. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, hey, woo! All right, <laughs> uh, but first we got to do the goddamn news. Next slide, please. Just a quick one, single news item this time, but it's an obvious one. Uh, bake the damn cake. Bake the. Damn cake. So the, the uh, Supreme Court of the United States of America um, have invented a new kind of standing in federal court, which is, I was afraid something hey. might happen to me, and I, my lawyers kind of made up an instance of it happening to me. They made up a guy and brought that guy to the Supreme Court. Yes. Yeah. It's it's the year <laughs> proving, of like proving that life really is a guy Twitter. to get mad yep. at. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Proving that life imitates Twitter. Uh huh. So, so this case uh, has essentially legalized discriminating against LGBT people on the grounds of like I don't like them. Sincerely held religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it also legalize a lot up. of other kinds of discrimination? Yeah, this is just so. a bit, this is throwing the doors open. Mm hmm. Just stuck with the obvious one first. Um, and this is uh, I I think it was a woman who like was afraid that maybe. She was gonna be asked to design a website for a gay wedding. She never has. Why would your wedding have a website? That's, I'm not going to fuck, to a fucking it's like website. A thing that people do now. All this My time. wedding has a website. What? Why? <laughs> well, Why? Because it's it's hosted on the Knot, which is like a, a hosting service for this specifically, and it was free. strange to call it that. Uh, okay. Mm. I, well, you know, the millennials are ruining the wedding website industry, so <laughs> have to yeah. sue over it. That's right. Um, and so now we can't have nice things in the United States anymore, anywhere. Um, I mean, th this is like um, one of about a dozen cases where it, it's sort of like it, you had this strange thing. Like, I, I know it must be considerably stranger living in America where you just like you're going about your day and you get hit by a laser beam of like nine old guys have decided that you can't have this anymore. Uh, it's like, you know. You're being bullied by septuagenarians. Like someone's coming, like yeah. slapping the coffee out of your hand, and being like, "Nope, that's illegal now." No, I didn't. I didn't get my coffee yet. You can't slap it out of my hand. I'm drinking water. 
when you go to Wawa, they're going to slap the coffee out of your hand because oh. of a sincerely held religious belief. Oh my sincerely god. Sincerely hold these nuts. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, you know, Court, to talk obviously. about intellectual lacunae and stuff, but like, there's, there, there, dude, I think it's fair to ask the question, what is to be done? Uh, and luckily, we have the the leadership of firebrand communist president Joe Brandon, um, who <laughs> has said um, he, he's he's got up in the White House and he's he's called for sort of like people's self defense and to kill these people. No, he's he said yeah. it's bad, but like I'm not going to do anything, and you shouldn't That's expect nothing, anyone to do anything. Nothing can be done. Yeah, yeah. No, nothing can be done or should be done. This is just the way it is forever. You just yes. have this sort of like guardian council that's just going to get scared anytime anything happens and make it so everything has to be a little bit worse now. Yeah, yeah, it's remarkable just how much legitimacy the court seems to have lost in the court of public opinion. You know, mm -hmm. this, 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 uh, I mean, this is sort of a return to the historical mean of the Supreme Court making really terrible decisions, which, oh, yeah. you know, the, the, the entire love doing like, it. several decades, uh, ending in the 2010s or at the 2000s was, uh, an aberration, um, you know, where, where they, they would, they had judicial activism and stuff like that, where, you know, they tried to make stuff better. Uh, we're back to the normal where their main job is to make stuff worse. Yeah. And I, I know nothing short of getting rid of this institution entirely um, is, is going to solve that. You know, Joe Biden, uh, please uh, send uh, F-35 to invalidate Marbury versus Madison. I've been saying um, this. This is the yes. official position of the podcast. Marbury Madison was wrongly decided. Yes. Um, yes. It, it is bad law. These guys just that they're not real. They made themselves Godlaw. up. Yeah, you, they made themselves up. Exactly. Yeah, they made you up can a guy ignore who it. became that guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's uh, also the uh, so, uh, affirmative action's gone now, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, you don't get student loan relief. Uh, Supreme Court to Americans die. I stole that joke from our guest. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. Trail. You're welcome. Um, yeah, and like, apparently Biden has a plan on student loan relief. I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's not very good from what, from the early leaks. Uh, I, I can't I, believe I'm, I, I don't think I'm shocking. Anyone. It's like putting out a statement that's like, try and get hit by a university bus. Yes. 10% off your first session at betterhelp.com. Ah. Oh yeah, they had to send out that uh the 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 student loan uh servicing uh thing yeah uh, the the thing yeah oh, fuck don't, bleep don't... that Devin sorry <laughs> all right yeah that 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 makes uh, that makes <laughs> yeah, the just, YouTube just, algorithm just bleep, mad yeah just bleep any mention of the the s word please and thank you yeah um but yeah so that that is they they had to sort of say hey here are some ways to some cool ways to discharge your student loans and they're all just like die, die. yeah. I was New York Times. The um the federal the, the the Department of Education or whichever one it was was like uh, tweeting out links to the <laughs> hotline. <laughs> yeah, in advance of these loans with payments <sighs> restarting. Oh, very very <laughs> god. <laughs> hotline, great way to get the police to break down your door. Actually, mm -hmm. um, yeah, you, you too can get yeah. welfare checks. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Welfare checked into a wall. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was the goddamn news. Terrible. Awful country. That was the goddamn news. All right, so uh, we are here today to talk about football. I, I take it back. Uh, it's not a terrible country. It's got football in it. Football does cool. have football. Yeah, we're, we're gonna let's 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 undo that uh, preconception real quick. Um, <laughs> uh, Drew, do you want to take this slide, or would you like me to? Um, honestly, you might be better at it. I can I can pitch I gotcha. in if you miss something. Yeah, so in the early days of... Okay, that's just Google, Roz. Uh, yeah, so I, the early, I clicked the button wrong. <laughs> so in the early days of football, uh, it doesn't look much like the game you sort of know today. Yeah, uh, kind of like cool leather helmets and you could die, like even yeah, more so. And, and they did a lot of the time. Uh, there was, by 1905, uh, 23 college football players had died playing the game. Uh, we talk about this extensively in our NCAA. Oh, no, 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 in 1905. In 1905, no, that's what I meant. Sorry about that, yeah. Uh, to the point where Teddy Roosevelt sort of had to get involved and create a commission as to why people kept dying, uh, mm. because he liked the he liked football as sort of an architect of manhood. 
Yeah, uh, and, and they were was... out there, you know, with the leather helmets on, doing like Bruce Lee and Game of Death shit. You know, like uh, you know, the linebackers got like push daggers and nunchaku and stuff. Yeah, it's exactly right. Uh, we <laughs> is so... it? No, it's exactly right. This game is fucking horrible. And even uh, even that, the helmets weren't mandatory until 1939. Yeah, uh, they would just wear like rugby style leather helmets or nothing. Sometimes just nothing. Mm-hmm. So you got to remember that the game started being played in, I believe, 19 or 1867, maybe 1877. Uh, the first college football game was a win by Rutgers. It was the only one we've ever had and the only one we will ever have. <laughs> uh, I'm dining out on it ever since. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, go Scarlet Knights, baby. Uh, talk about we should talk about just the game has gotten one of the things I want to talk about. It's not known to the side. The game has gotten faster, training has gotten better, and therefore the sport is more brutal than ever. Mm. Uh, yeah, you see these like big impacts of like guys running into each other on like helmet on helmet, right. and it's like right. you hit your head on every play, basically, especially cool. if you play O line or D line. Uh, you will hit your head constantly, and it you like. I want to be very clear on this just before we even get into uh, what happened to, to Jordan McNair. Football is a sport that will kill you on a timeline long enough. Yeah. You will die. You will not recognize your family or friends. And you will, uh, you know, there are normal, there are many documented cases of players committing uh, or dying by the S word. Uh, because they don't even know who they don't even fucking know up from now. <laughs> I, I I just I just hate that we've already made uh, essentially a running bit to avoid being censored of the S word now. Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we got a lot of complaints about the photography episode, so oh, not because, that it wasn't like, good, but the, because YouTube, I have to upload the audio only version of it, so people uh, stop yelling at me. Uh, yeah, exactly. If, look, if you can't get into the bonus episode, uh. You, Try and log into your parents' YouTube account. Yeah, then you'll lie be about your age. To... Get a fake yeah. ID, and exactly. you two can can see a, a Robert Kappa photo of a dude getting other s worded. Yeah, it's shot. Um, yes. <laughs> so in 1940s, the plastic football helmet is patented by Riddell. And uh, Drew, you want to talk about how helmets have been an arms race ever since? Yeah. So like, helmets weren't even mandatory until. 1939 um before then you'd have guys they would like make helmets out of leather um the and then in 1940 Rydell patents this plastic football helmet and all of a sudden oh we can hit way harder because we're protected oh no um <laughs> exactly what i can happened. drive faster with a seatbelt on there's a reason they make you take a physics class to get an athletic training d- degree nowadays. I do like these sort of like early plastic helmets with no face guard, uh, like no sort of like chin support or anything. It's just like it's a dome. It's a plastic dome. There's a theory uh, related to this where bare knuckle boxing was basically actually safer for you because you couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because because at some point you just you, the lights go out and then you just go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And and now with, with with gloves and shit, you can be hit harder for longer. Um, there's also a theory around football that's similar. So fo- helmets have gotten more and more padded, so people can hit harder and harder. And it's gotten into this culture of football where you're just gonna like try to kill the guy. Um, so nowadays, football helmets are like. They have like air padding and they're really substantial, right? Um, and there's a theory um, in my field that banning helmets in football would um, result in less deaths. Because hmm, you, you bring back some like some self preservation instinct, I guess. Right. And I would refer you to the slide, or I would refer you to the slide where. You can see like deaths like significantly dropping over time, right? That's the top right of your screen. Uh, that and if, theory is you... pretty much bunk. Um... <laughs> yeah, for those of you on <laughs> yeah, audio, we, we uh, could we could bad. go back to the period where like yeah. you know a, a couple of dozen people died every year. Right. Yeah, yeah. Let's not let's not go back there. Um, and even. Even then, like, we honestly don't have much data on what 
concussions or even heat illness looked like prior to about 2000 because people just didn't really think concussions were a thing you're trying to you're trying to bring science into a football game i mean no yeah. thanks that's yeah. gay we yeah. don't want it right exactly exactly um yeah. so like because beforehand all they were really recording was like deaths because right. yeah. they didn't and, and, really and like care it, about concussions or anything yeah and, and if you got concussed in like the 20s or whatever nobody even knew what a concussion was you could have just had too many like cocaine eye drops yes uh like it, it could have been any one of the like right infinite number of things that could have fucked you up and it was just a weird personality quirk you know yeah you're just shooting at the neighbors for fun there's that uh <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure couple years there couple there couple years there after World War One, when they started using surplus pith helmets, uh, death went <laughs> way up those years. Is that true? Uh, <laughs> no, he made that up. Uh, I, I'm willing no, to believe it that anyway. Up. That's my new what sort of like alternate history, secret yeah. history of the NFL. It's like wow. shooting at your neighbors for fun, but your neighbors have Kevlar walls, so they're like, yeah, please, shoot at me more. <laughs> 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 and then... Uh, as of 2013, the CDC... That, that, that's basically Montana. <laughs> yeah, great state. Good it's great. Colorado, uh, I like that too. Yes. So the two CDC... guys on different mountaintops, both farming weed and shooting at each other with like 44 caliber pistols. You just say Hunter Dings S. Thompson, the window. it saved the time. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you need to do a shootout with the Bureau of Land Management. <laughs> Self-care. That's what like normal. mental health looks like for men. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Hunter S. Yeah. Thompson, uh, like every third listener's weird uncle. There's like there's there's a lot of guys in Colorado, and they're all like that. Same with Montana, you know. True. Well, Western uh, Slope, or like Rockies, Colorado. Yeah. Regarding that, um, as of 2013, the CDC was estimating that about 1.6 to 3.8 million football co concussions happen a year. Roughly one every football game, which is why Americans are so normal. Ah, cool, because you play football in like high school, right? And like junior high, too. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so junior high is usually tap, tap, or I'm sorry, touch or flag. But uh -huh. there is junior high hitting. People yeah, do you do can that. play as young as like eight. Yeah, cool. Uh, also, we missed the word million in the notes, and it said that uh, as of 2013, there were about like between 1.6 and 3.8 concussions a year. And I was like, damn, that's pretty good, actually. Yeah, All yeah, things considered. Wrap it up. Yeah. <laughs> and you wrote and you read million in there. I was like, oh god, oh god. Yeah, it's real bad. <laughs> the best part was when you said one every football game. I was like, yeah, Americans play about. Well, between one and four football games a year. <laughs> it's like radiation, Everybody, you have like a lifetime actually. exposure. Yeah, 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 it's like 1770, 76, where you have like, the entire nation is enrolled in yeah. one football game that lasts the football season. It's like jury duty, you get a letter that's like, your nation <laughs> needs you. Congratulations, you're starting at guard. Uh, why, why is there Gatorade on the slide, though? Yeah. Um, well, so... 1967, Gatorade becomes commercially available. Um, in this season, it was uh, it was developed in uh, Florida for That's Gatorade. Oh, University of Florida Gators. Okay. What, what, um, but what, what what is it? It's... So basically, Gatorade is like when you sweat, you uh, your sweat isn't just water; it's electrolytes. So that's your salt and your potassium. Cramping is caused by an imbalance of salt in your blood which mm -hmm. makes the like which makes the gates that make your muscles stop firing uh no longer stop or like no longer work um if that makes sense yeah so it's an electrolyte like sports drink basically um so the idea behind it is people people are losing sweat and sweat is salt water basically but they're only drinking water during play and during sport, that must mean that we should be replacing salt as well. Um, yeah, you gotta drink sweat to make sweat. So, basically, uh, University of Florida, I think? Um, yep. the, these researchers are like, hi, can we try this? Um, the head coach goes, no, you can't, you can't experiment on my varsity, but you can do whatever with the freshmen. 
Um, <laughs> so eventually, <laughs> during this season, they have a... This is uh, 1965. They have a scrimmage between the varsity and the freshmen, and the freshmen win. The head coach is like, hi, we're going to have that at all of our games, please. Thank you. And then Florida goes on to... Um, have an undefeated season or something like that. And then the I, next I just, year Gatorade becomes commercially available and everybody's buying it. I, I just love that like freshmen in the sort of American educational system are, are meat. They're free real estate. You can use them for mm -hmm. you can do anything. You can do MK yes. Ultra to them. You can do the Stanford prison experiment to them. You can fucking uh, like shoot them full of gay raids. This is, it's, a, it's all good. Whatever. We'll get to it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next slide, please. So let's talk about heat stroke. Uh, hmm. Drew, you want me to run through this? Uh, I got it. So okay, go for it. Um, so I'm gonna start just by talking about heat-related illness in general, right? So you can you can pretty easily think of heat-related illnesses as a hierarchy of you've got your less severe stuff like a heat rash or heat cramps, and those would progress to heat syncope, which is like a uh, it's like a disrupted heart rhythm and then you get heat fatigue or exhaustion and then eventually you're getting heat stroke um most people just have heat cramps it's really common uh, especially for people who are like predisposed to it around 104 degrees fahrenheit in the body um there's this kind of cascading effect that happens where you reach 104 degrees Fahrenheit, the heart can no longer function as well. So it doesn't pump as much blood, which means you're not sweating as much, which means the heat damages the sweat glands, which means you're sweating or you're not sweating at all, which means you get hotter. Um, and meanwhile, you, you're 104 degrees. So your brain is boiling, basically. Cool. That's um, that's a like sort of uh, shorthand diagnosis or like differential diagnosis between heat exhaustion and heat stroke, right? As you're sweating a lot and then you stop, right? Yeah, and your your skin gets really like hot, um, and your skin gets really hot to the touch, um, because it's got this cascading effect is happening. Um, so since two thousand. 34 NCAA athletes have died from heat-related illness. I actually want to take a second to talk about that. Uh, this shit does not happen in the pros. Mm. Uh, professional athletes don't, don't die of this, and it's not because they train better, this and that. It's because the people who are invested in their uh, health know that their asses are on the line tail. And we, talk about the, we can talk about, at some point, the power structures for college athletics versus professional athletics. But this is absolutely you could certainly a, a whole episode about it yeah. with us. Yeah, you could. Uh, NCAA episode with Spencer Hall. Yeah. Check it out. Uh, but yeah, this is they they kill these kids because they don't care. Mm -hmm. They don't. It's just, they don't set out to do it maliciously, but they don't care. It's not their. It's not. It's not their shit in the game. It, in the grand uh, hierarchy of uh, experiments on animals. Um, Freshmen are slightly below <laughs> monkeys. Neuralink has killed twelve hundred uh, yeah. freshmen. Oh no! How are we <laughs> yes. gonna How are we gonna milk them for all their money? Uh, but yeah, Drew, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry for interrupting you. Yeah, no worries. Um, so part of that part of that cascading heat stroke effect is as it gets worse, the heart gets worse at pumping blood, and when cells don't get oxygen, they die very quickly. Like within uh, within a few minutes, right? Um, so That's it leads to things we call like a vascular necrosis, where you've got tissue that isn't getting oxygen and it starts to die. Um, it also typically, um, you can think of, um, there's another condition called rhabdomyolysis. And you can think of it as like, outside of this severity hierarchy you can think of it like to the side of it directly next to heat fatigue and heat stroke okay? Mm. okay and what that is is 
it's essentially severe dehydration mm. um, to the point that your muscles uh, kind of like liquefy. Oh, Ew. don't like um, that. And it's, as you can imagine, very bad. <laughs> um, I like this line that just says muscle soup. Yes, um, your um, the way that they diagnose it is with a urine test, searching for things called ketones. Um, so essentially, your yeah, your urine becomes muscle soup. Um, oh, this is really uh. really stressful on the liver and on the kidneys because um, they're trying to clean out all of this uh, muscle soup from your blood, basically, and they have to work really hard. Um, Another thing we're going to mention is heat stroke. So how you fix it is you have to immediately cool the person because as we talked about, you have minutes to right. get their circulation restored. Um, so how you diagnose that <laughs> is you have to use cold, cold water immersion the second you suspect a heat stroke. Um, and you have to use a rectal thermometer to uh, diagnose when the core temperature is dropping. The reason being is that if you get an oral temperature or you get like one of those temperature guns, mm -hmm. there's a lag between what your core temperature is and what the rest of it is. And that lag is especially pronounced when your heart's not doing, or your heart's not circulating so good. your blood very right. well this is this is all very fun as sort of like ways of tricking people who are trying to do first aid you know <laughs> yeah and the, the characters of our story will get very tricked yeah, i didn't know I, the muscle soup thing has freaked me out mm, i mean it just sort of heat, heat injury being being deceptive and also very dangerous is uh, it is cool. It's cool to think about, especially as we think about rising global temperatures and how every heat wave just like wipes out a couple of Kills thousand, a couple thousand people. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you get the get those wet bulb events. We're all yeah. excited mm -hmm. for those to start happening. I was explaining that to somebody the already. Other day. Well, already <laughs> happening in places. It's just it's yeah. unevenly distributed. You know, of course. Mm -hmm. Or you get like the sky is orange, and you've got your coaches being like, "Oh, you can go and practice whatever." <laughs> you probably shouldn't do that. Uh, no, we'll get there. Uh, you want the next slide? Uh, yes, please. Doing the the Carl Sagan pale blue dot speech yeah. about this dot. Yes. Death to the NCAA. We'll get We've there. We've said this. Yes. Yeah. Death to the NCAA. Um. So. Um. Actually, Liam, why don't you kind of go on like NCAA training rules for a second? Okay, uh, so I, so so what I know is that basically uh, there are times where you're allowed to practice and times where you're not allowed to practice, and then there are times where it's optional. Uh, but in terms of in terms of the actual rule book, I don't really know. I just know that when when they're like, oh, it's a re rest day, no, it isn't, and these programs push these kids to their absolute limit in terms mm. of. You know, uh, it makes you a man, that sort of thing. Even There's more this... unpaid labor on top of your already unpaid labor. Right. Yes. We're talking like, uh, if I recall that we were on discretionary time off when this event occurred. Uh, uh, for the month leading up to it. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Sorry, my, my bad. Yeah, so basically there are, you know, off-season workouts. There's voluntary off-season workouts. And there's, in, you know, you have to be there. And basically, these kids are, especially in the culture of college, this is what I actually want to talk about. Like I said, I don't know the rule book uh, verbatim, but uh, as someone who has some experience in this, you are going to be pushed to your absolute limit. And the coaches are there basically to scream at you. Hmm. Uh, and, you know, they, they will Isn't flaunt this game supposed like to be uh, fun? Or yeah, are we not. just doing like Navy SEAL stuff? Okay. We're doing Navy SEAL stuff because okay. it makes you a cool. man. It makes you a man uh -huh. house. And that's, oh, that's what this yeah. boils oh, down okay. to is masculinity and power dynamics. And basically, I just hope the players have a good time. They don't. <laughs> I do. I do. I want to see, I want to go to a sporting event where everyone is having fun. Is that too much to ask? Apparently. 
Yeah. So what we had before the Jordan McNair uh, uh, disaster was basically strength and conditioning coaches would report to the coaches and not to the athletic trainers. So they're just the little minions of the coach. Oh, uh, and, and co- this coaches. Is a problem. Yeah, mm. no, we're talking. I, one every more thing. Sport, or ev- this is a problem because every strength and conditioning coach is insane. Yes, I was going to say, not, aren't, aren't, I also like all coaches these, make, these like, like weird Napoleonic sort of tyrants. Yes, yes yeah, they are. Like, they are fucking the horrible as a rule. Strength and conditioning coaches are extra that. They also make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year to uh, bully and kill teenagers. Cool. I, I, I think about. I, 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 think I think up and put them down. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think about a guy called uh, Felix Margat, who is uh, a German football coach who is famously called the last dictator in Europe because <laughs> he, he was that guy. Like, was, well, he still is every, that guy. Every strength and conditioning coach is like this, mm-hmm. where it's it's pure. Uh, you're gonna push your body until you collapse. No water. Uh, I don't know if we have it in the slide here specifically. But DJ Durkin, the head football coach at Maryland, who we'll get to, is now regrettably on Ole Miss's staff. Uh, he said the heat makes fools of us all, or make or, or it makes like weak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, do yeah. less in the heat, then I guess. Right, exactly. That's the thing is that these guys simply don't give a shit. And again, we can talk about race and class and power dynamics, but these are white guys paid millions of dollars a year, or hundreds, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in Maryland's case. And they killed, and this is, you know, it's worth noting, a black kid. Hmm. And they and and at least Durkin got off more or less scot free. Uh, do you want to talk about Drew? What you uh, this? What is an athletic trainer slide? Yeah. So, and also like, I went to a D one uh, college and worked for football as an athletic trainer, which is what we're going to talk about with the next slide, please. Um. That was a smooth ass transition, Drew. That was good. Thank you. Yes. Um, so athletic trainers, we specialize in acute and rehabilitative care for athletes. Um, which typically means we're at every practice or most practices. Um, and it's our job to make sure that like in these time critical scenarios that it doesn't get worse, right? Our job is to provide that immediate care that if you call EMS, it's too late by the time they get there. Mm. Um, So we're talking sudden cardiac arrest or we're talking heat stroke. um, (coughs) like that. Um, And then as a quick aside to that, um, we also work in high schools. I'm a high school athletic trainer and I work at an inner city school and most of my job is looking at something and saying, you don't need to go to the doctor for this Um, Mm -hmm. because we've got kids who are like trying to, um, who are trying to get into college, trying to get a better life for themselves and they can't really afford doctors a lot of times. So a lot of Mm -hmm. times uh, in the uh, high school setting, we kind of act as primary cares to a degree. It's interesting that this is a different field, and in Europe, I'm used to uh, like a like a physio doing this. The stuff that like where you wouldn't have a doctor doing it, but it's still sports medicine. Uh, whether that's sort of like doing like no, you are you can't go back on, or um, you know, and any of the jokes that I ever make about sports medicine, which is like spraying stuff on people until they agree to stop playing football or whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, and. We kind of exist as an artifact of how fucked the American healthcare system is. Because for a lot of our kids, we're the only person, we're the only healthcare that they like can afford and have access to. Um, but wow, that's not a factor that's in the bleak. college setting. That's yeah. real <laughs> bleak. Just yeah. doing sort of like Starship Troopers, but for football. To be like, yeah. yeah, the only way you can get like any of your like so health your issues seen by anyone is, is by playing the sort of concussion roulette. Yeah, you have to have to serve in the football core, gain <laughs> citizenship. No. <laughs> I'm doing my part <laughs> as you get tackled. <laughs> uh, but that's not really trip. a that's not really a factor in the collegiate setting. 
because these college teams, especially a Big Ten team, have they have doctors on site or or not on site, but on call. They have insurance through the school that they can go and the athletic trainers have connections with doctors where they can get them in on short notice, stuff like that. Um, but uh, also I want to talk about D1 athletic training for a second. Mm -hmm. um, so how this works is you've got this hierarchy, okay, of you've got the head athletic trainer whose job is mostly logistic, but they are also around for practices and treatments and stuff. And then you've got kind of assistant athletic trainers who are still certified athletic trainers, but they actually are the ones doing the work, right? Um, and these are typically, typically how it goes is they'll have a athletic trainer and then they'll have graduate assistants who are still certified athletic trainers, but they're just not getting paid. Um, and then... Oh, fun. I, have... I, I, again, like a boundless resource of unpaid labor. Yeah, and then they'll pull they'll pull students from the undergrad athletic training program and they'll they'll pull them into football and they'll say, oh, yeah, we're going to teach you how to do this. And it'll look good on your resume. And then you spend the whole season giving out water bottles. Um, I'm not bitter. It's unpaid labor all the way down to the bottom, maybe. It is. Yeah, it is literally unpaid labor it's a very bad culture yes um also as an aside i wanted to say as an atc you work in the college setting or you work in the pro setting for the prestige as a high school trainer if you were to normalize for the amount of hours that i spend doing my job and compare it to an nfl atc or a college atc we make about the same brutal Extremely exploitative, yes. But hey, if you like, it, it, it looks good on the CV, and then you can keep doing it so much, you get kicked upstairs to just do the logistics, and you organize all of the unpaid labor, handing out the water bottles. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I, I regret to inform you, we probably need to pick up the pace a little bit here. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, you're fine. Next slide, please. <laughs> I just want to make sure Alice gets out. All right, this is my you're slide fine. to talk about the University M. of Maryland's football program. M, M Mr. Bond. shouldn't fucking exist. Uh, so one of the things I, uh, this is actually sort of going to be just for, sort of just for me. Uh, Maryland uh, has had a football program since 1892. Uh, that's 131 years. And in that time, they have one national title. So <laughs> these schools exist basically for TV deals. These football programs exist for TV deals. Temple is no different. Rutgers is no different. Uh, I want to talk about the fact that these schools, as we mentioned in the NCAA episode, make hundreds of millions of dollars off these TV deals. Uh, the players see none of that money. Uh, it's I'm not even going to bother talking about name, image, and likeness because that has nothing to do with this. Uh, so this kid is going to die uh, to feed the bloodlust of a program that ha of a program that shouldn't exist in the first place and was negligent in killing him. Hmm. Uh, we should talk about college football at this point probably shouldn't exist. Uh, Fuck Maryland. Uh, keep in mind, this is also the school that killed a girl uh, because they had molded in her dorm back in 2018, 2019, and didn't give a shit until like three months later. Wow. Died of pneumonia at 18. Uh, <sighs> this school is especially heinous. Uh, colleges, you can check the college episode, but yeah, uh, she, she had Crohn's disease and died of pneumonia at 18. And I just want to talk for a second less about Maryland football and what it means to put your trust in these people that mm. when you send your kid to, you know, you you put them in the care of these coaches, and you trust that they're looking out for your kid, your baby. Uh, Jordan McNair was once a baby. I mean, th this is like the the promise any university gives you is that they're going to like act in loco parentis. Uh, right, and... and it's just and they killed him. And they killed him. They didn't give a shit. It's capitalism. Right, I get know? I get yeah. very very passionate That's about right. this, but uh, That's all right. Yeah, it's it's pure fucking molten evil. Uh, don't let your kids play sports. This is going to be the uh, capstone of this thing. But uh, mm -hmm. you you trust your kids to these coaches, and then they kill your kid. And, you know, you should, if you have children, if you're expecting children, that sort of thing, be skeptical about the people that you trust them with. Uh, because 
Jordan McNair's parents trusted. Jordan could have gone to Alabama or a school with a legitimate football program where they don't kill kids at Alabama. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and still instead, exploitative, he, but you, oh, you yeah, will get stayed, out of it alive. He stayed home. Yeah. He was a good kid. He stayed home. He's from Owings Mills in Maryland, not too far from where I grew up. I remember him coming out of high school. He was an absolute monster and a lot of potential wasted because these white guys in their 50s just don't give a shit. Next slide, please. Hi, it's Justin. Uh, So this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, People are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month and we give you an extra episode once a month. Uh, Sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, It also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, Join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. So these are our characters for today's story. Um, On the left here, we have Rick Court, who's the strength and conditioning coach um, for Maryland. Second to left is DJ Durkin, who's the head football coach. Um, Why does his face look like it's been mirrored? I was about to say, uh, yeah. It's sort of the the portrait of uh, Dorian Gray, but he he gains his power from killing teenagers. You'll Mm. notice he's wearing an Ole Miss polo in this shirt. Because he has a job at Old Miss after he killed a kid. Huh. Well. Comeback story of the decade. Yeah. Second to right, we have Jordan McNair. He was highly recruited coming out of high school, and he chose Maryland because presumably it was close to home. Um, it was about an hour drive from his house. Um, that, that's really heartbreaking as well. Yeah. He was all USA Maryland. He was Baltimore Sun All Metro first. This this kid could have uh, and probably would have gone pro. He was that talented. Uh, I remember seeing him, uh, seeing clips of him in uh, in, in the, the, the high school, and he could wreck. And it's mm. just for what? And then on the far right, we have um, Wes Robinson. He is the head athletic trainer. The logistics guy i talked about um however he was at practice this day um i would encourage you before we go to the next slide to see if you notice any significant difference between these four men Mm. yeah Mm. it's not an accident it's not an accident uh next slide please if you if you were only doing audio and you were unable to pick up on the implication all of them but jordan mcnair white um okay so here we have a satellite image of the Maryland sport complex, I guess. Um, so before we talk about the workout, we have to talk about some pre-workout conditions. Um, first off, Jordan was on Vyvanse. It's a stimulant, which is used to treat ADHD. And stimulant use is a risk factor for exertional heat stroke. May 4th through May 29th, which is about a month before this workout occurs, is uh, discretionary time off. Um, The NCAA is reducing reduced, is enforcing reduced allowed activity loads. So basically they're only allowed to be with a coach for six hours a week at this time, Mm -hmm. Um, which is significant because these guys are spending eight hours a day. Um, doing their sport they're not practicing it necessarily that whole time but they're watching film they're in meetings they basically never leave this little building at the foot of uh at the foot of the football field there 
it's a black building. Uh, that, if you that's mind. already kind of like uh, concerning in itself, like like right. cult yeah. atmosphere, you know. Yeah, well, it's there's so much money in it that they are not about to let them have free time or friends or anything. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how you come out of like um, at, at the other end of this, whether you like go pro or you don't, you come out of this with like a degree or like an NFL career where you've made a lot of money in a short time, maybe, but you have like sort of no experience of like a huge swath of like any kind of human experience. Right. Yeah, yeah this nice major point. in general studies. Yeah. Criminal justice. <laughs> you too can get a paper degree, but yeah, please go on, Joe. But that's not the that's not the factor today for this for this month beforehand. Um, it was a discretionary time off. They were only allowed to be around for a reduced amount of time, and in that time, all athletes were emailed workout expectations by Rick Court, the athletic train or the um, strength and conditioning coach. Um, it's. We don't actually know if Jordan followed them. He there was there wasn't really like a mechanism to require it, other than the threat of when you come back on the first day, we are running ten one hundred meter or one hundred ten meter sprints. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, one hundred ten yard sprints, right? Um, in the in the month leading up to this incident, um, April 27th through May 29th, Jordan had gone from 328 pounds to 341 pounds. He had gained 10. Um, and this incident would happen on the first day back. Um, other factors is the main football stadium, which is where they were pre planning on practicing, was unavailable due to due to construction. So they had a backup plan to practice in this uh, white building to the south, the field house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that's significant because they probably have a tiny athletic training room in there where they could get out water and they could easily set up for a practice in there, if that makes sense. Right. Um, so at the last minute, the university dropped the ball and said, actually, you have to practice on the practice court that is um, to the east of the, of the main athletics building. Um, is that this one here? Uh, the one to the the one to the east of that. Oh, I see. This one here. Yep. Okay. <laughs> so basically, instead of just pulling stuff out of storage in the field house, they are loading up coolers and whatnot in this black building, and they are ferrying them out, which is going to result in less preparedness um, from athletic training staff, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um. It was 80 degrees on the field that day, and that was the weather, like weather report temperature. Um, there's no, they don't provide a wet bulb from that day, but if you've ever been on a turf field. And 80 degrees, it's not fun. It adds about 10 degrees standing well, like on one of those 20, turf fields. 26 degrees and then being on turf field like 36 degrees, Jesus. Yep. The reason being is like the padding that a turf field is, is black rubber, or at least it was before the last few years when things are kind of changing about that. It's the like layer of like dead worms underneath it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. 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 So basically any, I've been on turf fields in 80 degrees weather doing water and stuff. It is hellish. It's miserable. Um, okay. So the practice, there were five certified ATCs. Um, most of these were probably graduate assistants and five undergrad student ATCs who were doing, I'm sorry, an ATC is an athletic trainer. Um, five, five students who are probably just doing water, right? Right. The workout starts at 4.13 p.m. with flexibility and dynamic warm-ups. Uh, this is normal. That's 
ideal. Uh, they take about 30 minutes to do that. And then um, at 4.38 p.m. That, that on oh. May 29th, 2018, the players line up to begin the testing part of the workout. Which is um, sprints, right? Which is 10 110-yard sprints. Um, Jordan McNair weighs 340 pounds. His job is to block, not to run. Yeah, And uh, he is expected to run 110-yard runs with 19 seconds. Ten, ten that's, of a, that's a long way to run if you're if you're that big because you're that big because you're an offensive lineman and that's your whole job mm-hmm. um all of these time prints that i'm going to give from here on out are pretty exact because there was a report filled by the or commissioned by the university into this event and they used the uh practice film for this uh to line up times for everything was happening um, so Jordan successfully completes the first seven and then on the end of it, or on the eighth, he is unable to complete. So in the video, he is struggling with the sets and his teammates run, run back from theirs to help him complete the sprint. They're just like, come on, you got this stuff like that. Um, he's unable to finish and he goes to get help from the assistant certified athletic trainer. Um, so the second, se- second in command guy in the like athletic training hierarchy there. Mm-hmm. Um, around this time, the head athletic trainer is getting a inhaler for another kid. Uh, I think on the other side of the field or on the end zone or something, and he looks across the field to see his athletic trainer or his assistant um helping Jordan with cramping, and he yells, "Drag his ass across the field." Um, West that will be important later. Gruesome. That- that's yeah, not good. No. No. Gruesome. There are reasons why you would want to keep somebody moving. They're less likely to cramp if they are walking and like doing active recovery, and that is encouraged in this program. However, <laughs> he didn't necessarily need to be so callous. And to be very clear, the head athletic trainer is not aware of the whole situation. He just kind of sees it over his shoulder and yells, drag his ass across the field. Um, and and that's time, the line that like becomes sort of like uh, shorthand for the whole program, right? We'll yeah. get there, but yes. Um, Jordan at this time is hyperventilating and cramping. Uh, neither there are two certifieds working with him at that time, and neither of them report noticing <laughs> an elevated skin temp. It's likely that in that hierarchy I showed you earlier, he's currently sitting at about heat cramp or. Um, heat exhaustion ranges. A lot of these conditions present alongside each other. Mm -hmm. The assistant athletic trainer caring for Jordan then decides this isn't getting better. We have to take him to the main treating room at Gossett Hall, which is the black building at the foot of the football stadium. So he loads him up in their gator and he takes them over there. Um, The head athletic trainer sees them do that and he starts sprinting across the field and meets and basically gets there just behind the cart. Um, Now, time between his onset of symptoms to being transported is 34 minutes, which... That's a long time. ...is very unexplainable. Like, there's Mm. not... It doesn't make much sense why you would take 34 minutes to make this decision, if that makes sense. Sure. Right. It's probably complacency or um, kind of the culture. Uh, Next slide, please. So this is the Maryland Athletic Training Room at Gossett Hall. Um, It is now 526 that um, the assistant athletic trainer uses his card to buzz into the door, uh, which is about 35-ish minutes after the initial event. Uh, Wayne Robinson, the athletic, the head athletic trainer, follows them in and instructs his subordinates to put Jordan in the recovery position and begin cooling with ice towels. Due to hierarchies of how this works, this is now Wayne's case. Mm-hmm. 20 minutes after entering Gossett Hall at 5.50 p.m., so 50 minutes out from the initial symptoms, Jordan's mental state abruptly changes. He begins yelling at athletic trainers and... Wayne notices this and 
instructs his assistant to call 911. Um, the yeah, because that's like a major, like, sort of right. heat the exhaustion. Shit is bad. Thing. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, up until that point, they probably thought that he would, he just had heat exhaustion, and they were cooling him adequately for that expectation. However, this treatment still isn't good up until that point, and I'll explain why. Um, later, the assistant decides to call the team physician instead um, of EMS, and the head of ATC had to instruct him to call EMS again. The assistant complied, but five minutes were lost in this. And while the assistant was, or in that five minutes, Jordan had a seizure. Oh, Jesus mm. Christ. Ooh. AT staff positioned him into a side recovery position and they provided supplementary oxygen. Um, but unfortunately, they didn't have access to an ice tub or else this situation probably would have ended differently. Next slide, please. If they had ended it differently, if if he had survived, oh, wait. with like they did have an ice tub. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is the ice tub in that in that facility. Um, sorry, please continue. Oh, my question was just if the if he had survived with sort of like no serious lingering consequences off of this, would we even know about it? Um, no. Honestly, cool. How, it... how often does this happen where they get away with it and it's just like part of the normal run of things? Uh, actually, I can't say that. I don't have the research. Sorry. Uh, common, more common than it should be. Mm. Yeah. Right. So they should have put him in an ice tub, but at this point, it's too late. Right. Um, not not too late to cool him, but he's now in an altered state of consciousness and is recovering from a seizure. Um, he weighs three hundred forty pounds, and. Uh, the athletic training staff in there with him right now, there's two or three people, they're not going to be able to get him into a tub, and if he has another seizure, prevent him from drowning. Mm. He should have gone in the cold tub immediately when they entered the facility, is what I'm saying, uh, while he still had normal consciousness. Um, if you've ever worked a heat stroke case, which I have, the altered state of consciousness typically makes people violent because you're doing things to them that is uncomfortable, right? You're using a rectal thermometer. You're putting them in a cold tub. Um, you're putting ice towels on their neck, stuff like that. So it's very common for people having heat stroke to try to fight the people taking care of them, if that makes mm. sense. Sure. Mm. Yeah. Um, they're still cooling him with ice, cold towels and ice packs to the groin. It is now 6.10 p.m., uh, an hour after, an hour and 10 minutes after the initial event, and the ambulance arrives on scene. Um, oh, nice, Wes, nice that they're keeping the sort of, like, degree yeah. of urgency oh, hey that we want, you know? Yeah. Uh, it still took them 20 minutes, but yeah. Um, Terrific. Wes and his assistants stress the need to continue cooling while in the ambulance, and they're allowed to ride along. They continue cooling efforts with uh, cold towels and ice to the groin uh, while the ambulance staff are running an IV. Um, they arrive at the hospital at 636, which is 88 minutes after he initially started showing symptoms. Jesus Christ. Um, please, uh, next slide, please. <laughs> so 88 minutes after initial symptoms, he arrives at the hospital. And this is where I reveal <clears throat> that at no point during this process did the athletic training staff get a temperature for Jordan. What the fuck? Wow. What the fuck, dude? Wait, wait so the one like actual way of determining the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke, they just didn't they just do? Didn't bother. Just didn't bother. Yes. At the hospital, his core body temperature was 106 degrees. Um, now, if you have a patient who is got 200 pounds on you, and the the thought of doing a rectal a rectal test on, or thermometer on them is not very appealing mm. uh, while they're trying to fight you, right? However, they never got an oral temp. They never used the little heat gun thermometer thing. Um, they just never got a temperature for him. 
Um, so he gets to the hospital and immediately they cool him down at the hospital, right? Um, the head athletic trainer stayed overnight at the hospital with Jordan and he was texting his parents. His parents had drove down when they learned of the situation, but obviously it was too stressful for them to be there. So Wes had stayed and was giving them regular updates. Um, on June 3rd, I'm sorry, on June 1st, which is three days after the incident, Jordan had to undergo an emergency liver transplant because 85% of his liver had become necrotic as Jesus. a result of wow. inadequate cooling, basically. Um, on June 12th, uh, so 11 days later, he was pronounced to be brain dead and he died a day later. Um, the head athletic trainer was at the hospital the whole time, um, regularly sending back like status updates to Jordan's parents. And after his death, some of Jordan's teammates reached out to them and told them that the student athletes had heard Wes Robinson yell, drag his ass across the field while he was recovering. Mm. Yeah. So at this point, Jordan's parents cut all contact. Um, Understandably. Wes Robinson shows up to his funeral, and Jordan's dad walks up to him and firmly tells him that he needs to leave. Understandable. Um, you, killed, you helped kill my kid. Like, mm, yeah. Yeah. Um. Next slide, please. So, oh, that didn't come out good. So, um, at this point, I'd like to state, or I'd like to kind of express that we wouldn't know a lot of this if it hadn't been for ESPN. ESPN gets wind of this story, and they are uh, widely reporting on it. Um, I went to town. I remember that. It was this was a huge story. Um, it's so much so that. Both reports into this event, there were two, are probably directly results of ESPN's pressure that they had put on the program just by reporting on this. Sports journalism um, uh, makes a difference sometimes. Yeah. You know? Genuinely. They had done an initial report, um, and uh, that's basically what I just read to you. The, but ESPN ran another one saying that there was a culture problem at the program that had made this event worse. Um, a quote from that interview from one of the players, from one, of, one of his former teammates had said, it shows a cultural problem that Jordan knew that if he stopped, they would challenge his manhood. He would be targeted. He had to go until he couldn't. Mm, yeah and and um, again like so. in order to play football and in order to like play football in a role that doesn't really require you to do anything like that athletically right um yeah his job is to prevent people from walking past him like right yeah. mm. you ain't if, um, if you're running 110 yards which is the length of a football field roughly uh and you, uh, I, I can assure you that you have not done your job as as an offensive line. <laughs> no. Yeah. Next slide. So the, the 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 tactical vision of that is, uh, yeah, not not great. Right. Um. So this uh, reporting leads to pressure on the hot, on the uh, football program that leads to the second in investigation into this. Uh, this was a independent report commissioned by the university. Yeah, I, I read um, some of this. They were really running this like sort of like marine boot camp. Like yeah. uh very, very strange sort of hazing stuff happening. It is now August eleventh, which is about well, this happened on May 29th, so a couple months out. Um this report alleged widespread abuse present in the football program. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the report to really work for me to read it. However, I would like to just read the table of contents really quick for you. Mm. 
um, specific allegations of coaching and other staff misconduct. Rick Court alleged to choke injured player with a lat pull down bar in weight room. Oh boy. <laughs> Weights and other items thrown across that or across training room, weight room. Morning tugs of war. Food knocked from players' hands. Player compelled to eat candy bars. Player compelled to eat until vomiting. Players exposed to graphic videos while eating. Player removed from meeting for smiling. Verbal abuse of player during practice. Players being forced to exercise on a stair stepper machine with a PVC pipe. Player complained of bullying to Mr. Durkin. Quote unquote, the Champions Club. Oh, they're an athletic booster club at the University of Maryland uh, who. Uh... At one point, I believe that a, a, a member uh, basically blamed McNair for his own death, saying if he had drank the water, he would have been fine. Uh, Jordan didn't do what Jordan was supposed to do. So uh, that guy specifically should fire himself into orbit. Mm. I hope he has a very nice time. Um, so at this point, after this report comes out, Rick Court and DJ Durkin, who had been in administration leave, were fired. Um, I'm sorry, I missed something in that Wes uh, Robinson had been fired after the first report came out. Okay, uh, where are we now? Or where are they now? Well, we're in kind uh, of despair, I would say, is how we feel. Mm, yeah. <laughs> Next slide, please. Um, so this slide is kind of a recap on kind of where people are now, right? So Rick Court, uh, who's the strength and conditioning coach is currently coaching at Greenville High School, which is a tiny town, 7,000 population or so. Oh, cool. Michigan. So he's in like football coach witness protection. Yeah. He just like, yeah, he, yeah he's, <laughs> he's, he's done at least. We hope. Like, yeah, I, I guess, but he's still coaching. Like. Oh, don't and worry, DJ Durkin children. is DJ Durkin's coaching at all this. Small enough and rural enough that they think killing a kid is good. I was gonna say that's tough. it's like you, this is some some shit that like you would think about your PE teacher when you were a kid is like, oh man, he's a real asshole. Where, where did he come from? You'd like find out that it's because he's he killed, like he killed a kid, in right. hiding because he killed a kid. Yeah. Um so on Rick Court's professional website. He has all of the institutions he's coached at listed there, except for Maryland. Um, <laughs> you didn't see anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely didn't kill a kid. Um, yeah, DJ Durkin, the head coach, is currently coaching at Ole Miss. Ugh. So he kind of failed upward then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not the head coach, but yes. He's a offensive coach, I think. Yeah. Um. Wes Robinson, he was fired from his job as an athletic trainer, but he was still a PT, and he continues to be a PT with the University of Maryland. Ugh. And then about a month after Jordan's death, his parents, Tanya Wilson and Marty McNair, founded the Jordan McNair Foundation. So this program is a program where Marty and Tanya, they go around the the kind of New England area and they teach, they give talks on heat safety um, hmm. for athletics, basically. Um, in January 2021, the University of Maryland paid a $3.5 million settlement to Jordan's parents. Um, a lot of that settlement is like things for the Jordan McNair Foundation. Um, so season tickets that they can give to donors, stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And they also name a classroom after him, I think. That's so little, considering. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially considering that this story was as big as it was. And also, like, there's an interview that I had watched from from this event where the 
I think it was the president of the university came out in an interview and basically said, it was a press release, said, we dropped the ball on this. This is our fault. We're going to do whatever we can to make it right. Which I mean, is... That, until that, the kid, yeah. Yeah, I was exactly. going to say, that that's the kind of thing it's that should like, start with ending the program, and instead it becomes like, oh great, you can take your afternoon class at the Jordan McNair Memorial Classroom. Right, exactly. And I think what's very uh, telling about that is you never see upper like upper people at a university taking responsibility so you know how bad this is right mhm mm um so yeah part of it is like after jordan collapsed there was an hour gap before they even called ems um and they had never grabbed temperature and it's like what are what are they even doing you know mm. Um, Manslaughter, I would say, but right. yeah. what do I know? I did want to say that I misspoke earlier. There has been a fatality uh, at least 2001. I don't know if there's been any since, I don't think so. Uh, Corey Stringer died at a Minnesota Vikings trading camp. Uh, of similar uh, <sighs> causes. And then the Vikings defense was that, well, his locker was full of dietary supplements. Uh, this is a every, every football player is taking like fucking five hundred things because they're told them. to. Yes, because all of their coaches are steroid guys, but they can't get them on steroids necessarily. So they get them on right. like fucking. Uh, you got to take the like you know beetle testicles or whatever the fuck, because right. uh, it's gonna you know imbue you with aggression and like fucking some half remembered sports science shit. Right. Yeah, and like especially sports supplements must have been a factor here it just isn't reported in the reports but like you're right a lot of there's a lot of pressure to be doing these types of things and the sports supplement industry is not regulated nope um so you put anything in there and they yeah, do yeah i was about to say Literally. yeah the 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 FDA just has no jurisdiction. You can yeah, you can put anything in there. Uh, Funnily why... enough, that brings us back full circle. That's why Gatorade is called that is because uh, it it allowed it not to be regulated by the FDA as a as a medication. They wanted to spell it AID A I D, uh, and they realized that was more more regulation, so they sort of A D E like a soda. Yeah, terrific. Um. um... Yeah, and who knows yeah. what the fuck's in Gatorade, right? Uh, zebra testicles. Um, <laughs> in, I, I noticed that. In yeah, June like pangolin teeth. Like shit. Yeah. All of the most endangered parts of the most endangered animals are just like squished down and liquefied, and you like douse your coach in it when you win. Right. Yeah. Right. When do you get sued by Gatorade? No. It's just, oh, it's just like radioactive looking green dye they put in like I love fucking Gatorade. salt I love water. Gatorade. It sucks. I love, I love Gatorade. Um, <sighs> let's wrap this up. I know that we're bumping up on the time crunch. Sure. Um, I guess before we go, I just wanted to say like, what do we take from this? This is, this college is football. a systemic issue. College, college football. football. And Destroy college the football. NCAA. Uh, Double A? I, I, see, this is the thing. When I, I, I'm so used to the NCAA P that I say NCAA for the NCAA, and that makes it sound racist when I. Uh, no. <laughs> college football is. <laughs> yeah, destroy it. college football is my point. Yeah. Um, this is a systemic issue in college football. Like, this is not. As much as I focused on individual characters, this is not specifically. DJ Durkin or Rick Court or Wes Robinson that did this. Right. This is the fundamental structure of college ball that uses these athletes and then throws them away. Um, mm. And there was not, there was no care from the coaching staff for, for uh, the people or for their athletes. Um, Kind of before we go, I'd like to kind of remind that this was the first day of practice. Mm. Um, it was 80 degrees on a turf field, and they had 350 pound kids running 110 yard sprints in 60 16 seconds. Like, 
totally unnecessary. It's the uh, the practice that kills you instantly. Yeah. Oh, no, it, it takes no, way the too practice long. that kills you yeah. slowly. Well, the slowly practice that kills you instantly. Or and there's, and there's no consequences yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah, and then there's no meaningful consequences for it. These people should be in fucking prison. Yeah, the practice that kills you instantly would be like if you did that, but you had planted landmines. You know, right. instead oh, yeah. Pri just prison like... abolition. But these guys go last. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then as a last aside, I would encourage any listeners interested in this uh, incident to watch the ESPN doc that just came out a couple weeks ago called The Freedom Within. It follows the head athletic trainer and kind of his journey kind of dealing with the guilt that he killed a kid, right? Right. Um, and Wes Robinson is now is now affiliated with the Jordan McNair Foundation, and he goes to their talks and participates in them. That's good. Yeah. Fire Rick Hort, DJ Durkin into the fucking sod. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and college football. And college football. We've, we've, we've had enough. Um, we will, I think we'll include a link to the Jordan McNair Foundation, uh, in the, mm -hmm. in the show description, if that's okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so on that happy note, next slide, please. No safety third, because we're really no pushing time. Third, we're, 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 we got a no time jokes. crunch here, yeah. No jarring yeah. shift of tone, but, get, you know, go home. Like, it's, yeah. it's over. Yeah. It's not it's happy. Over. Uh, yeah. comedy podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Talk, uh, call it. Our next episode will be on Chernobyl. Uh, does anyone have any commercials before we go? Just the Jordan McNair Foundation. We don't need to do yeah, anything it's a, else. It's not really a the commercial. Jordan McNair Foundation. Yeah. All right. Well, that Bye. was a depressing episode. <laughs> Bye, everybody.